This is the Pacific Coast Stock Exchange, where thousands of transactions take place every hour. And you can be sure if the traders are institutional investors, they're using computers to get the information they need to tell them when to trade and at what price to trade. But nowadays, even the small individual investor can take advantage of computer analysis thanks to a whole range of investment software packages that run on a personal computer. Today, we take a look at personal investment software on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by CompuServe, featuring an online reference library, Wall Street reports, at-home shopping, airline reservations, games, and hundreds of other services. CompuServe, helping people get the most from computers. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe, and sitting in this week for Gary Kildall is Jan Lewis. Jan, you've probably seen this neat little toy. It's called a quote track, and what I can do through radio frequencies is find out exactly what my stock is doing on the stock market right now. So happens the market's closed, so we're going to see the summary, but I put in the code for Apple right now. I hit enter, and there's exactly the latest figures. It closed at 39 even, opened at 38 and 6 tenths. The high was 39.4, the low 38.6. Total volume for the day, 730,000 shares. Net change for the day, down two tenths of a point, and so on. This is just one example of how this technology has increased the flow of information so quickly when you're dealing with it in this investment area. When we talk about computers and investors, though, people uh, think about the crash last October, mm -hmm. and of course many people blamed computers uh, for that nosedive in the stock market. Is this perhaps one area where computers are maybe a bad thing rather than a good thing? Overall, I think it's a good thing. Overall, what's happening is that information is getting out to more and more people. Uh, and remember, in the stock market game, information is what makes you money. So, mm -hmm. so really, that part of it is very good. On the other hand, you also have computers that are programmed to say, gee, if a certain uh, set of circumstances happen, I want to issue a sell order. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what happened during the crash, is that all the computers have the same formulas issued a sell order. Mm -hmm. But the answer to that is not to stop technology or stop the progress of what's happening in the investment area. The answer is what, in fact, is happening. The exchanges themselves are putting limits on when you can and can't do program mm -hmm, trading. Mm -hmm. Jan, on today's program, we'll be focusing on software for the individual investor, and we'll take a look at three basic kinds of programs, things that do fundamental analysis, technical analysis, and portfolio management. We start out by visiting a school that teaches investors how to use computers to do just that. It's called the Computerized Investor Center, and it's in Pleasanton, California. Breaks out of that consolidation area Computer owners who would like to use their PC to help with their investments now can get assistance at the Computerized Investor Center, just outside of San Francisco. The center helps individual investors to become more self-sufficient by learning to use the same kinds of software and database services that professionals use. The changes in hardware that, and software that have taken place in the last three, three years are dramatic. With the new third generation, as I call it, of computers, you find software has finally become as easy to use as the advertisements claim. At the center's classroom, charting historical trends and stock price movements is central to the curriculum. For Macintosh users, the program of choice is the Wall Street Investor. IBM classes use an integrated package called the Active Investor. Mr. Jeffers believes that investors who learn to master their computers are prepared for anything, even Black Monday. I'm making no claims that we were all uh, soothsayers and prophets and knew exactly what was going to happen, but it's clear that the person who had a computer and was looking on the screen, as has been witnessed by numerous people who've called us, who, are, have, who use our software, it's obvious that they at least had a picture of what was happening and they at least had the warning. Now, whether they acted on it, that's another matter. While the Computerized Investor Center doesn't claim to teach mystical powers, it does offer computer users an edge in what can sometimes be a bumpy ride along Wall Street.
Joining us in the studio now is John Dutra, Vice President of Savant Corporation of Houston, Texas. And sitting next to John is Elizabeth Livy, Manager of Software Services for Value Line Inc. of New York. Jan? John, I keep hearing the terms fundamental analysis and technical analysis. What does that really mean? What are the differences? Okay, technical analysis generally refers to stock prices and stock volumes, the history of the price of a stock over time that, that as it's been uh, reported as every day in the newspaper. Fundamental analysis refers to just about everything else, how much money the company's made, how much they have in the bank, uh, uh, earnings, how much they spend in R&D, all that kind of information. Okay, John, now, now you're going to show us Fundamental Investor, which is one part of the, the series, I guess, of programs That's you correct. Can show we, us how that works. Okay. We have the, the main menu of the program here. The, the program has a catalog or main menu section, analysis section, and a data section. Uh, in the catalog section, we'll go in quickly and just give you an idea. We can handle, uh, or the program supports data from several different sources. Mm -hmm. Disclosure Incorporated, which is available by diskette or it can be downloaded. Uh, information from Standard & Poor's Corporation available in Diskette, information from Ford Investor Services. So how many different pieces of information? There's about 700 about items of information, in fact, and in can addition... Can you create your own items Exactly. In, in addition to those, you can put in your own, you can type in uh, numbers, or most interestingly, we think, is uh, you can put in your own equations. For example, recently in Forbes magazine, there was an article about that adjusted price sales mm -hmm. as a, a way to measure companies. Here, what we've done is we've said, okay, let's put in the debt adjusted price sales. In that case, it's catalog number 301, which happens to be the price sales ratio, divided by what amounts to the equity mm -hmm. over assets plus current ratio. That is, is all it takes. You type in the equation, and bingo, there it is. Okay, I've got all this information. I'm an investor now, and I want to make some decisions about what looks good to me. How would I analyze this? Okay, we go to the analyze module to do that. In the analyze module, the first thing the program tells us is because we put in a new equation, uh, you have to recalculate, okay. which we could do if we wanted to, since we didn't actually put in a, a, right. any changes we want at this time. Uh, we'll go ahead and pick something, for example, like uh, latest price. We'll tell the program, I want to see stocks that have a latest price greater than 5 mm -hmm. and also, let's say, a latest price less than 25. Uh, we'll start with that. And the program will go ahead and screen on that information, come up with a bar graph that gives you a representation of the last item screen, in this case, latest price. And what's the universe it's pulling? Right now, it's from? pulling from what happens to be one of the disclosure data disks. Okay. okay. Again, it can be any one of these, or you can combine them, uh, including our equations at the bottom is the, uh, of this. So uh, it's picked all the stocks that would meet those criteria. That's exactly and that's sort of right. A bar chart on the right there. Oh, that's correct. Or company names, okay. as, as you prefer, and uh, you can add additional information. For example, we might go down to uh, price earnings ratio and say let's add a I want to make sure the price earnings ratio is greater than five and also I want a dividend yield greater than five and again we'll go ahead and tell the program it'll screen this now is the bar graph of the dividend yield since that was the last thing we put in mm -hmm. uh, and it's telling us 23 companies met that we can take those 23 companies transfer them to the communications function download additional information uh -huh. update them every day have the equations recalculated go do the charts on them in the charting if you've had that and so on That's basically great. Okay, John, can I ask you to unload your program there and sure. slide the keyboard as soon as you're okay. finished there over to Elizabeth. And Elizabeth, while you're uh, getting your program up and running, what, what's the cost of something like Fundamental Investor? Okay, the Fundamental Investor is $395. That's a one-time charge, but there is a cost for the data, and that depends very much upon how much of it you want which one it is. It runs as uh, from as little as 10 or 15 cents if you just download one piece of information uh -huh. from Warner to as much as uh, $1,400 if you take the entire disclosure, uh, 12,000 companies, uh, on a monthly basis. So it's, it's basically right. quite wide ranging. Okay, and Elizabeth, you're going to show us now Value Screen Plus, which I think is a little more expensive, isn't it? This is sort of higher end product? No, Value Screen Plus is sold as a subscription service. It runs from $211 a year to $1,500 a year. Uh -huh. That includes the data. Okay, so you don't okay. just buy a piece of software, you really buy this service. Right, and any upgrades are included with the subscription price. It okay. just runs that and way. Show us how it works, in particular how it might take a different approach from what we just saw. Okay, well, we only use Value Line data which is formed by our analysts mm -hmm. and has a track record over the years which has outperformed the market. Um, mainly we are screening utility. This is the main menu for the product. Um, go into screen, you have 38 different variables that you can screen on. Ratings and estimates variables, market data, historical measures, and growth projections. Mm -hmm. um, and once I've, again, you're doing fundamental analysis here. This is fundamental mm -hmm. analysis, yes. Okay, I created a list earlier, just show. Okay. okay, and from this, we're looking for a recent price, which is reasonable, a safety rank, which 
means we won't be losing our money, mm -hmm. and a timeliness rank, which means this is a good time to buy it. Okay, so now wait a minute. You've okay. got three criteria you've established there, that the price should be less than 50, which right. is easy to understand. Now, the safety rank index number three and timeliness rank number okay. two, what do they mean? They both go from a ranking of one to five, one being the best situation, five being the worst. So we want to make sure that it's a one or two safety rank, mm -hmm. so that means it's pretty safe to buy it. Timeliness rank of one means this is a perfect opportunity okay. to buy it. And, and okay. again, these are value line numbers. These are value line okay. numbers, So what yes. do we do with that now? Okay. Well, we hit this key. It shows us that nine out of 1,590 companies have met that criteria. Uh -huh. We can hit this key. We see what companies they are. Okay, so, so they're the nine stocks that have met the three criteria which you've established there. Right. Okay. Okay. If we want to see more information on one of those companies, we can go back out and go to a ticker report. Okay. Display this report, Hildebrandt. This first one there. Ask for it. Mm -hmm. And this shows all the variables we provide for that company. Well, okay. let's do it for all the nine different stocks that are just picked out by your criteria. Yes. Mm -hmm. You can do it on any company in the database, whether or not it just met your criteria. If you just want to go in and look at one particular company, you would go to this part. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if you wanted to look at all the companies together, on a variety of different mm -hmm. variables, you would go into the reporting section. Here, I've created a screen already, too. And, and what are we doing now? OK, we're calling a report format just to okay, look at I different see. variables on all nine of those companies that had passed the criteria. OK. OK. So that shows us a little more information. Right. All of this data can be downloaded to a diff or a worksheet file so mm -hmm. that you can do more in-depth yeah. analysis on it. Okay, John, let me, let me ask you a question. John was mentioning at the very beginning of the program that all this investment software is sort of making it easier for the average guy to get some of the information that the big guys used to have. Mm -hmm. Is this, in fact, kind of a field leveler for the individual investor? It helps an awful lot. It certainly is not a absolutely everything. One's, one problem is, again, timeliness. There's a big difference between staying home as your job and watching this. Mm -hmm. But uh, it certainly makes a big difference from the way things were 10 or 20 years ago, absolutely. And would you say, just briefly, I mean, it, it, uh, among investors now, I mean, is the guy with better investment software, does he really have an investment advantage over the guy whose software isn't quite as good? Well, we think so. It's a, a question of over the last few years, as more and more investors have been involved in computer software, we're finding more and more of our customers are saying exactly that. They're asking for the software because their friend uses it and has liked it and it's helped. And uh, for that reason, they want to get involved. So I believe the answer is yes. That, that is yet another important buying decision. <laughs> and I get. John Elizabeth, thank you very much. We've just seen two examples of fundamental analysis. In just a minute, we'll see two programs that do technical analysis. First of all, a visit to Montgomery Securities in San Francisco to see how they use their PCs to do portfolio management. Wendy Woods has the report. To investors, time is money. Decisions are made daily, if not hourly, and the problem is compounded when an investor owns dozens of stocks. That's where what's called portfolio management software comes in. At Montgomery Securities, a brokerage in San Francisco, a package for the PC called Professional Portfolio from Advent Software tracks the performance of some 50 client portfolios. This is a job for the number-crunching skills of a computer. Each stock is updated daily and automatically through an interface to the company's mainframe with the P&L, or profit and loss, calculated in the blink of an eye. If at the end of the day I manually posted all the trades and then tried to come up with the P&L for the end of the day, it would take me on average for one account, it would take me at least a half an hour per account to get the information that Advent provides me with for 40 accounts in three minutes. The daily P&L is the bottom line, but this package also calculates each portfolio's performance over time and issues full reports when needed. This package is clearly not for everyone. For one, it carries a $5,000 price tag. And secondly, it requires a certain level of experience. But for those with the money and the experience, it's proven to be an invaluable tool that saves time and makes money. In San Francisco, for the Computer Chronicles, I'm Wendy Woods.
us in the studio now is Curtis Carmen, Director of Sales for Equus International of Salt Lake City. Next to Curtis is Tim Slater, Marketing Vice President with CompuTrack, a division of Tellerate Systems of New Orleans. Jan? Tim, when you talk about technical analysis, what are you really referring to? And is it better than fundamental analysis? No, they're both good tools, and I think most serious investors should be both a fundamentalist and a technician. The technical approach is the study of open, high, low, close, volume, and open interest. That is price only. And the technician feels that everything that's known about a specific item is built into the price structure. Uh, the so really then all the uh, information from the fundamental is already reflected in the technical analysis. That's correct. We believe an investor should study the fundamentals and know that he is buying something of value or selling something that is overvalued and use technical analysis for timing. Okay, Curtis, give us, a, give us an example of technical analysis. You have a program called Metastock Professional. Correct. Kind of run through how you would do technical analysis with it. Okay, here we have a select file window of Metastock Professional. And as you can see, there's various types of securities, bonds, options, stocks, mutual funds, and so forth. What I've done today is create a series of macros that run through a set of steps with just one keystroke, so okay. it saves a lot of time. Now, first, what are we going to analyze here? Okay, we're going to look at Metastock Professional's windowing capability first. And okay. that'll, that'll well, be apart from its capability, what stock are we looking at here? What okay, we we'll look do? at Lotus and size down the chart and do several okay. indicators mm -hmm. upon it. Okay, so we'll just type Alt-1, which is the name of the macro. And what's it doing? Okay, we're loading up the window here. Now we've sized down the chart to a medium-sized chart. And we do what's called cloning here and change the colors to enhance the picture a little bit. We've moved down to the lower left and done a stochastics while up in the upper right is an MACD, both popular indicators. And then in the lower corner we've done a performance of Lotus showing how it oscillates be above and below zero mm -hmm. in a histogram form. The next thing I'll show will be how Metastock Professional uses some trend line commands in the same macro state. Okay, so you're taking a look at Texaco analysis. Stock yes, correct, Texaco. And running this technical analysis on it. And from here what we've done is we've loaded a large chart and we'll extend the chart 30 days so the user can work with it and draw his trend lines in and as you can see a nice wedge has occurred so the buyer can get an idea of where the stock is, mm -hmm. is headed. Curtis, this looks very um, complex. Is this to help the professional who's already doing it or can the average investor, the average person understand how to do this? Yes, the average uh, individual has use of pull down help windows, a analysis section in our manual which is over 100 pages so he gets a good feel for the indic indicator interpretation. And again this stuff is whipping by real fast on a right. 386 <laughs> machine under a macro. Right. It? it doesn't always happen that fast. Exactly. All right, what else would you do? Okay then from here we will go down to IBM and we'll show you some of the new features of Metastock Professional which is a GAN grid which the user can select as periods as al also as days. It's okay, kind of what does this represent? This is uh, a GAN grid. It's represented number of days and number of periods of st uh, shifting. Mm -hmm. Okay, then from here we'll go to the last macro I've created, and this will show some Fibonacci's and some speed resistance lines, which are new trend line commands within the program. And then the very last thing I'd like to show would be reset the values, go to a split screen, mm -hmm. load up an indicator here, and we'll show a profitability testing. Go down and load up an MACD by pressing Control F10. That'll allow us to test the system. And we'll test the moving average penetrations, which is C here, and test both long and short trades. And we see that we have made, oh, a 7% gain on, on uh, trading IBM and its MACD over 200 days, which is fairly good. Okay, now, now again, were you simply, you were testing performance backwards or simulating performance forwards? What were you doing there? I was testing it backwards, and this kind of gives a trend of where hopefully the stock is going over, uh -huh. over time. If from this point the user can take that to a, to a, a series of 120 plus printers or to a desktop publishing mm -hmm. format. Okay, can I ask you to get out of your program there and okay. uh, get ready to, for CompuTrack to get loaded? And while he's doing that, Tim, let me ask you, uh, what different approach does CompuTrack take? And in general, what different approach do both of these things take from what we saw in the first half? We kind of in a different ball game here of analysis. It seems much more complex. It is more complex. I think generally a technician would have to study his craft for a year before he begins to really get into it. However, it is a value from the first day. Uh, like anything else, you're dealing with professional traders. 
professional traders are using technical analysis. They have for hundreds of mm -hmm. years. And uh, it behooves the investor to arm himself with yeah. all of the tools he well, can. Well, let's see this tool. Put up, pull up CompuTrack for us and see how, uh, how you would do this technical analysis here. Okay, see, I think you're already in your subdirectory there, yeah. Okay, so tell us what's going on. All right, I'm at my main menu. I'm going to go into system automation. I, too, have written a macro, and I'm going to go into scheduling of utilities. I'm going to perform a schedule, which is a task that we have. Mm -hmm. and the schedule name is called AB. Okay, and what's this doing? It's now going to draw in data on gold. The file consists of 348 data points, and it's going to draw a chart, first with a grid, then it'll resize itself with trend lines that have been predefined. We have the ability to store trend lines. Uh, we were talking about how you read a chart, yeah. what a technician does. This is a pattern of indecision, where you have lower highs and higher lows. Whichever way it breaks out of this trend line, the technician would say, that's the way the market okay. is moving for its prime move. The longer that triangle, the more it's been going on, the more powerful the move. Mm -hmm. And what's happening now? Right now, we're going to draw a, a study on top of this. It's a study called an alpha beta. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a brand new study. It has a signal line drawn through it, which you can see in red. Uh -huh. One of the problems of all traders is what do you do in a sideways choppy market? And this study statistically sanes out those sideways markets and alerts you when you're in them. You read it in that your red signal line, when it's above the channel, you're going short. Mm -hmm. When it's below the channel, you're going long. Mm -hmm. Now, we've done one other thing. We've asked it to study its profitability, that is, go back and test it empirically. And what it tells us when it gets through. Mm -hmm. Okay, again, you're testing the profitability of the transactions you made using that analysis. That's correct, over the past year. It tells us that it's made about 129 points on gold. That's worth about $12,000. $12, so that, that's a graph of your profitability, not, right. not the gold Right, and this is important, market. too, because it's a nice, smooth, upward rise. There isn't major drawdowns, mm -hmm. and that's the kind of profitability you're looking for. Now, you can go one step further and ask the computer to test all of the parameters in your particular study and come up with the best ones. This is called optimization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've done that, and what happened was we ended up with a chart that showed another $2,000 profit. Yeah, you got some hard copy there. What is that, Tim? Well, the technicians who had never used a computer before are always worried how do they read their studies when they're printed. We stack them one on top of another, and each study is read in registration. Mm -hmm. We also have the ability to go back for years if necessary and print out long charts as long as you have data. Okay, which is more than you could see on the screen. Right. Mm -hmm. I guess. You also have with modern printers, as Metastock can do, send them to laser printers, mm -hmm. to very large Epsons. Technicians usually work with okay. charts that are this size. You can do all of that. Curtis, what kind of price are we talking about for something like Metastock Professional? Two ninety five. Two hundred ninety five dollars. Yeah. And how about the servicing of getting the information in there? Currently Metastock Professional is compatible with over fourteen databases. So depending on which data service you use, I see. which and can't be track? The same thing. We both use the same database. There's more or less a standard in the industry, and uh, you can go to any professional database you wish. Gentlemen, thank you very much, and good luck to you in your computerized investing. Hope we'll see you here next week on the Computer Chronicles. In the random access file this week, Borland International has released its new version of Quattro called Quattro Pro. Borland says the new spreadsheet program offers all the functionality of Lotus 123 Release 3, yet will still run under only 512K. The new 123 program requires a megabyte of RAM and a DOS extender. Quattro Pro is due to be shipped next month. The price is $495. And Borland has announced it is cutting the price on the original Quattro program to just $129.95. Moltec Corporation says it is developing a new battery for laptops that will have five times greater power storage capacity than existing nickel, cadmium, and lead acid batteries. The new thin film batteries use solid polymer electrolytes. The major advantage is that the polymer batteries lose only 1% of their capacity per month. 
compared to a 30 percent loss for conventional batteries. The company says the polymer batteries are less expensive to manufacture, but will probably sell at a high price due to their reduced size and increased lifetime. Fremont Communications has announced a new fax board for PC compatibles priced at only $195. It's a 9600 baud half-slot card. It comes with software that provides a graphic front end that simulates the control panel of an actual fax machine. The Freecom fax board needs only 36 kilobytes of memory. Wang has introduced a new line of PCs, including one using IBM's microchannel architecture. There are four new products, two 286 machines, one 386 using standard industry architecture, and the MCA 386 machine. All four computers feature SIMs for their RAM, meaning you can put up to 8 megabytes on the motherboard plus another 8 megabytes on an add-in board. Peter Norton Computing has come out with a new version of its DOS manager, the Norton Commander. The new release is version 3.0. It features expanded file viewing formats and an expanded quick view function. The Air Force is warning bases across the country about the Columbus Day virus first discovered two months ago. The virus is reportedly set to be triggered when it sees the date October 12th. It attacks the system's hard disk by reformatting track zero. The online community is up in arms over the failure of NASA to release GIF format pictures from the Voyager Neptune flyby. The Jet Propulsion Lab says it does not have the manpower to quickly release the tons of image data received from Voyager. Also, says JPL, there are scientists with proprietary interests in the data. However, several Voyager 2 GIF files are now available on CompuServe's astronomy forum. Meanwhile, a new CD-ROM is available with earlier Voyager and Viking images of Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. The disk is being sold for only $9 by Meridian Data of Scotts Valley, California. The CD includes file formats for both the Macintosh and the PC. Finally, the annual Miss America pageant had a computer angle this year. For the past several years, a computer hacker from Illinois has successfully predicted the winner by crunching the candidate's vital statistics into a program he developed. The variables were height, weight, the usual other measurements, plus college, major, hair and eye color, talent type, and state of origin. But pageant officials have decided to stop releasing the data. They've reduced the emphasis on the numbers and have added a written essay for the judges to read. The hacker, George Miller, says he's giving up on his prediction program. Not enough reliable input, so no more confidence in the output. That's it for this week's Random Access. I'm Kate McGargy. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte Magazine, and VIX, the Byte Information Exchange. In print and online, Byte and VIX serve computer professionals worldwide with detailed information on new hardware, software, and technologies. For a transcript of this week's Computer Chronicles, send $4 to PTV Publications, Post Office Box 701, Kent, Ohio, 44240. Please indicate program date.